Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Irish Mirror and Stars coverage of World Cup 2023. Uh, I'm joined by our man on the ground, Mark McCadden, in Australia. Um, he's looking pretty tired, so you'll have to forgive him. He's uh, been running around. It's been a busy couple of days, um, but Ireland are set to face off against Australia, uh, co-hosts tomorrow. And Mark has been busy over in Australia for the past week, um, getting things ready and chatting to, to the team and Vera Pa. Um, so he's here to fill us in on, on what we can expect this week from the World Cup opener. Um, Mark, first of all, how have things been in Australia so far? Yeah, great. I suppose we've been kind of away from a lot of the excitement and build-up in Brisbane so far. The, the Irish fans have obviously been assembling in Sydney. Um, so it's been it's been a, a bit of a strange week in that regards. Uh, it hasn't been a huge kind of indication of, of, of World Cup looming, but coming down to Sydney today um, or this morning, uh, you could really get a sense of what is coming. Um, there's a lot more kind of visibility around the city and, and a lot more green jerseys. Uh, there are a lot of green jerseys. Um, so I'm really thinking that there'll be some good support there tomorrow. But I mean, the players have, it's probably been best for the players as well that they've been kind of kept away from it. They've been staying in Brisbane in a, an amazing hotel. They've had the training grounds themselves. They've uh, Brisbane is a really kind of nice, peaceful city where they are is right where there's a load of cafes and restaurants. So they've been able to go out and have coffees and walks and so on. So, you know, their build up has been, uh, uh, I suppose, apart from one or two issues that we'll talk about uh, shortly, their build up has been pretty uh pretty ideal um just in terms of i suppose uh getting the whole work rest balance right and mm. and, and uh, having also a bit of time to switch off from it all yeah absolutely because i think that you know the irish team are kind of juggling a few different kind of variables at the moment i mean obviously there's just the challenge of all the traveling that comes with heading to, to over to australia and i know that vera powell spoken about how they have kind of jet lag plans and things to overcome that but it probably is best that they were kind of kept away from some of the madness so far because it can all, it can add a lot of pressure i think um, and we know that irish fans are very passionate and there's a huge irish community over in australia so i think they're probably handling that kind of initial start to things well before for the opener but what i wanted to just talk about is there was a press conference today um how did you get on with that mark grand yeah no look these things these set kind of set pieces they're they're never going to be too revealing because it's a uh, very kind of organized and structured by fifa and mostly a journalist will get one question so you kind of he have managers and players bouncing from one topic to the next um i suppose the most interesting chat we've had so far was a couple of days ago uh, when we sat down with vera pow um the, the i suppose the new newspaper journalist and 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 she was incredibly engaging she was incredibly relaxed um, and this is now going to be in in, in Thursday's uh, Star and Mirror um, and online as well now. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. Um, she has obviously had her own issues uh, to deal with recently. Um, but again, despite all the stuff with um, the Columbia game and Denise's injury and Katie's injury scare, she seems to be really ready for this to start now. Um, so like I say, the press conferences, uh, there wasn't a whole lot kind of, of insight given in, in those today. Maybe a little bit when the Australia manager, um, Tony Gustafsson, said that he is aware of one or two areas within the Irish team that he reckons his team can exploit, looking at the recent matches and the kind of concessions of goals late in, in, in halves, in the first and second halves. Um, so uh, that was probably the most uh, most insightful thing to come from the press conferences today. But um, otherwise, uh, like I say, uh, a real treat uh, to look forward to in terms of uh, Vera's uh, the chat we had with Vera just a day or two ago in Brisbane. Yeah, and you touched on obviously kind of you know hasn't been the smoothest sailing for Ireland um, so far. Um, I think there's probably a lot of jitters in, in in general because of the pressure that is around the tournament and our performance and what's expected. But obviously something any sort of other variables that have been thrown in haven't been helpful so initially we saw that katie mccabe suffered a an injury uh, against france before they actually headed over to australia and thankfully uh, she recovered from that quickly and she was in top form but then there was kind of much bigger headlines then when ireland faced off in a friendly against colombia do you want to maybe tell us a bit about what happened there mark yeah, um, I suppose, first of all, if there's two players that you didn't want to have injury scares over, I mean, it's it's those who, Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan, but the, the, the McCabe one, kind of the, those fears were laid pretty quickly. Then we move on to the Friday game against Colombia. There was the whole mess of, you know, we, we were hoping to get in even those behind closed doors. We'd come to an agreement with the Colombian uh, officials. And then when we got to the gates of the ground, uh, we were told we couldn't go in. Um, got back into town in time to switch on the TV and watch the Australia-France game and then uh, it's 
it wasn't long into that when there were whispers of, of, of kind of, you know, something had happened up in the training ground where the Colombian and Irish teams were playing. And uh, yeah, it wasn't long again until it was confirmed that there was an injury and that uh, the game had been abandoned. So straight down to the team hotel to see what was going on. Eventually, the, the, the team comes back in after they play their own match, or play a match between themselves. And uh, talk of, of this overly physical approach by the Colombians. Then the next morning, it was down to the team hotel again. Vera gave a, 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 an insight into what happened. She, um, I know the Colombians kind of, well, sorry, someone leaked out the footage of of the tackle a 10 second clip and all of a sudden people were jumping to conclusions based on that um but i mean the the, the, the again talking to irish players talking to management and so on there was a whole lot in the build up to that including one tackle which nearly um get, put put Ruisha little john out um as well so uh yeah it was just it was it was another it was another mess it was another thing that you just didn't need in this build up to the world cup but fortunately um, and I don't know how she's done it because, I mean, he, you know, and I know that the, the, the kick to the shin that, that leads to bone bruising and, and, and soft tissue damage, it, it, it's not necessarily something that heals up pretty quickly. But to see the pictures of Denise O'Sullivan running in training today and, and getting involved in tackles and contact and so on, um, it, it, it was something I suppose we all needed just to give us a lift ahead of what's going to be an incredibly different challenge, difficult sorry, challenge tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. I think the Irish team have kind of already met a lot of challenges head on and they've really shown that they've really got what it takes to kind of meet any challenges thus far. And as you say, it was just unfortunate that, you know, these kind of incidents were happening when we don't really need any kind of additional pressure yeah. heading into the tournament. I just wanted to ask, do you think it was probably the right decision to abandon the game after that, that tackle had been made? Because... 100%. Um, the, when you see a star player like that getting injured, I don't care, you know, what people say about it, how, how, what the optics are like and so on. Everyone knows that this Irish team is able to give as good as they get. They're a very physical team and they're not afraid to put in challenges themselves. But when you see a star player going off and you see the pattern of, of the game coming up to that point um, and the fact that it's a training ground game, it's unofficial, there's no kind of FIFA consequences for calling it off. It's, 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 basically, it's, it's basically a training game. Um, there's no point in continuing it. Um, so what they did, I think, was the right decision. Um, and it means that, you know, obviously the, there's no further injury scares for tomorrow. Absolutely. And just on then tomorrow. So I think Virpa has, has been really good at kind of towing the line of like positivity, you know, a lot of encouraging signs, as you said, from the team, but also probably tempering expectations as well, because, you know, people can get carried away with the expectations as well and she has kind of admitted that you know we are the underdogs in this tournament in, in many ways um but you know that doesn't mean that there isn't signs of optimism and that you know there can't be some great results um you know throughout the, the entire tournament really so just on that then what do you think we can expect from this opening clash tomorrow you know what can we expect from the australian side and what can we expect from the irish side yeah, it's probably going to be the most difficult test that, that these players have ever faced. They went over to Sweden um, in April of last year and got a one-all draw against a team ranked second in the world. But um, to do that in a qualifier is an exceptional result. Uh, to do it in a World Cup against the, the co-hosts is is it's a monumental task. It really is. And, and um, you know, kind of the heart says you're obviously looking for a, a positive result, but the head says that, you know, you're in Sam Care country now. This is a, 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 a really, really strong team and and uh, they're going to be pinning the Irish back. They've got a very pacey front line. Um, Sam is Sam Kerr is, is a player who just needs a half yard of space. She doesn't need to, you know, her, her movement is just so precise and and it's time to perfection that that it's gonna not only is it going to be physically so tough for the players but mentally they're going to have to be switched on for 90 plus minutes those minutes at the end of each half that that the australian manager was referencing earlier on um so it's 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 like you say it's going to be a challenge they've never faced before the crowd the anthems the occasion um it's it, it's going to be a special moment for them um and if they do come away uh, without a point, you know, they still have to remember that there's games against Canada and Nigeria still to come. Two teams that have been engulfed in turmoil off the pitch in the build-up to this tournament, so who knows what can happen there. Um, 
Yeah, so look, it's it, you know the heart obviously wants one thing, but the the head suggests that, that it'll go another way. But sure, look, who knows? It's it's an opening game of the World Cup. We've seen Argentina lose two massive opening games in the past against you know Cameroon and Italian nineteen Saudi Arabia just gone. Um, so you know anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen indeed. Well, I think we'll leave it there for now, Mark, because. Um... Obviously, you've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow as well. So thanks very much for the update so far. And um, make sure you get some sleep now and rest up for the big <laughs> star. We really appreciate you um, taking part in all this stuff. The time zones, as you know, have been pretty crazy. So I'm sure all our viewers will uh, <laughs> appreciate all the madness. So um, I'm sure we'll be hearing from you again soon um, after yep. the match tomorrow again, Mark. Thanks, Mill. Cool. Cheers, Ian.